Wow. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you. I don't know where you spent Thanksgiving weekend. Maybe it was different. We didn't have the loved ones right next to each other the way that we used to. But we are so glad that you are here. Today we start the Advent season and we are so excited that you are here. Thank you for joining us here, here in person. Also online, thank you for being faithful. We think about you. We pray for you. Thank you for being here. Let me start with this question. What about if we had pictures of 2020 before it got here? What about if, you know, let's go back to 2019. And then we would look at some pictures of 2020. And you would probably think about these pictures here. You would say, what is, you know, Queen of England looking at Meghan and Harry that way? I mean, are, are they leaving the royal family? Uh, come on, they, that cannot be possible. What is, what is this animal here? You know what, are they killing people? I mean, is that, is that what's going on here, the murder hornet? What, what about Kobe Bryant? What happened to him? What happened to him? Surely there's got something going on here in this year, 2020. Why are those hospitals in New York City full of patients? There is no room. For more patience. What, why is these people wearing those masks? What's, what's going on with the, with the market, with the stock market? What's going on? What, what's going on with those protests? You know, people on the streets and protesting here and there. What's going on? Why are people so depressed? Why is anxiety on the, on the rise on 2020? I just kind of don't want to go to 2020. I mean, I mean restaurants are closed. Church is closed. What about all those Zoom meetings? Uh, look at those lines. Those are like unemployment lines. You know, can someone explain that to me? What's going on in California? Is California on fire? And this is, I don't have the picture for that one, but what's, what's the deal with the kids going home, you know, going to school in homes? I mean, what's the deal? I mean, are they supposed to be at school? What's COVID-19? What's corona virus. Sometimes we will think about skipping times or seasons in our lives, but that's not the reality. That's not the way it works. You know, Job chapter 8 verse 13 tells us something. He says here, Bildad says this, those who forget God have no hope. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. Even if you cannot feel it, even if you can't see it, God is up to something in your life. You know, the more you move away from God, the less hope you and I will have. But the opposite is true also. The closer you get to God, the more hope you and I will have. Many people place their hope in politicians or stock market or profession or jobs or companies, but we place our hope in Jesus and Jesus alone. I love Christmas. Do you love Christmas? It is indeed the most wonderful time of the year, right? I love Christmas. You know, the streets are light up. The stores are full of decorations uh, of things that you must get for Christmas. We kind of skip Thanksgiving. We just think about the things that we are getting for Christmas. I was on my way back from the valley yesterday on an airplane, and I received the last message from my daughter is the list for Christmas, what she wants. She was thankful, you know, on Thursday, but now she wants something for Christmas. You know, this year, we are calling everyone home for Christmas. And, and you say, Pastor Orlando, I have been home like for eight months. Come on. You know, but have you been really at home for Christmas? What's home for you? What do you call home? Is that a physical place? Is that an emotional place? Is that a spiritual place? What is home for you? In my case, you know, uh, I would say I'm from Colombia, but I live in South Texas. So every time I would leave South Texas, they would ask me, where are you from? And I say, well, I'm coming from South Texas, but I was born in Colombia. Now I have to say, well, I now live in, te in, in Dallas. I'm coming from South Texas, but I was born in Colombia. I'm kind of confused. I'm a global citizen. Where is home for you? You know, home, simply stated, is where your heart is. Wherever your heart is, there is home for you. Spiritually, you know, our heart 
needs to be in tune with Jesus. Jesus is inviting us home. He's, he's making that appeal, that invitation in this Advent season. So today, we're going to talk about that hope that we have in Jesus. And we have some verses that are going to be kind of the, uh, the, the focus for this sermon series. The, the first one is found in John, the Apostle John. And we're going we're gonna to use the message Sorry, theologians, I know this is not exegetical corrected, but this is a paraphrase. Simple language, street language, family language, very common. John 15, 4 says, live in me. Make your home in me just as I do in you. In the same way that a branch can't bear grapes by itself, but only by being joined to the vine, you can't bear fruit unless you are joined with me. That's Jesus. You know, there is this key verse for the whole series, John 15, 7. This is what it says. But if you make yourselves at home with me, and my words are at home in you, you can be sure that whatever you ask will be listened to and acted upon. I love that translation or paraphrase of the Bible. But if you make yourselves at home with me and my words are at home with you, you can be sure that whatever you ask will be listened to and acted upon. The psalmist expressed this desire in a prophetic word years back in Psalm 84, 1 to 2. 1 to 2, it says, what a beautiful home, God of the angel armies. I have always longed to live in a place like this. Always dream of a room in your house where I could sing for joy to God alive. You know, Jesus wants a home. He wants our heart. So as we come off a season focused on the fruit of the Holy Spirit, remember, we enter a Christmas season Advent. You know, the arrival of Jesus and how he has changed everything and as we abide in him daily the fruit of the spirit will be evident we'll be able to bring hope peace joy and love to those around us home is where you're where you belong and we say in this church you know everybody somebody here you know home is where you belong hope belongs in your life through Jesus Christ. So let's focus on my favorite, one of my favorite verses in the Old Testament. It's found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6. You know, this verse contains about 39 to 40 words, depending on the translation that you read. But it talks to us about the ministry of Jesus, about the arrival of Jesus, the advent of Jesus. It talks to us about his ministry about how he dies, how he resurrects, and he talks to us about the resurrection and the hope that we have when he's coming back for his church again. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. This is what it says. It says, for a child has been born for us, the gift of a son for us. He will take over the running of the world. His names will be Amazing Counselor, Strong God, Eternal Father, Prince of Wholeness. You grew up with this version. It's not there on the screen. But for to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. How many remember that? From Sunday school, okay? I memorized that one, of course, in Spanish growing up. But the verse tells us about three things, about three things. The hope that was given to us as a gift, that's the first thing. And the hope that was given to us as a king, the king ruling. And the hope that was given to us as a promise. Let's look at the first thing. This hope was given to us as a gift. For a child has been born for us. The gift of a son for us. How many of you like and love gifts? Oh, not many? Okay, you're not getting any, okay? This is my first Christmas season here, so I better receive some gifts. But I love, 
I love gifts. You know, even if it is just a simple card, we all love gifts. Oh, come on. But the best gift that we have in Advent is Jesus. Jesus might be born so that he will carry the sins of the whole world. You know, he was flesh, his incarnational ministry. He came in a baby, lying on a manger. He was there. He was innocent. He came. He created the world. He created human beings. And then he came to be cared for <laughs> the creation. Come on. He came in the form of a human being to be able to walk, to feel, to hear, to be able to suffer in our place. He came, simply stated, so that we could have eternal life. The announcement of Jesus wasn't ordinary. Remember the Christmas story? Uh, I grew up in church, so I, I play different roles in the Christmas play. You know, uh, sometimes I would do the angel. Sometimes I was promoted to be one of the shepherds. Uh, you know, the time that was Joseph, he was like, oh, man, that was outstanding. But in the narrative, you always see that the angel appears and he brings good news of hope to all the people. And the message to Joseph is that he's going to be a father a very unconventional way of becoming a father. And then he receives the news that Mary is pregnant, not of him, but the Holy Spirit. And that everything is going to be fine. And he's going to be the Messiah of the whole world. Imagine, I mean, not coronavirus. That was terrible for Joseph. We all see the play. We all like it. But it was not ordinary. The announcement wasn't ordinary. The wonder of the creator placing his very welfare in the hands of the creature. The wonder of the creator being dependent on the creature that he created for food and nourishment. The announcement wasn't conventional. What a gift. And my question today is, do you have that gift? Because you, you could have all the gifts in the world. But if you don't have Jesus, you're missing out the purpose and the reason for this season. The second thing is this hope was given to us as a king, the king. You know, the Bible says here, he will take over the running of the world, the ruling, the government. And, and notice that it says, son is given. You know, this calls to mind the deity and his death. You know, Jesus, 100% human and 100% God. You know, that's, that's difference right there, the difference between Jesus and all the other ones. Jesus was 100% human and 100% God. Even though Jesus was the son of man, he was also the son of God. He was more than just a man. He was the God man. This verse reminds us of the truth that we find in John 3, 16. But God so loved the world that he gave his only and begotten son, so whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life he came as a ransom for many for our sins for the sins of the world the original you know talks to us about to be delivered up it reminds us that this god man came into the world for a singular purpose he came into this world to deliver himself up as a ransom on my place on the cross of calvary when we think about the price he paid for for our souls when we think about the spitting, when we think about the beating, when we think about the nailing, when we think about the rejecting, the hating, the abusing, Jesus came as a king. What a wonderful king. You know, it, it also talks to us about the honor of his position. We are told that the government shall be upon his shoulder. This phrase encompasses two principles. The first one is that the son was given, it's a gift. He is a gift on the cross, very unconventional. But the second one, this phrase also takes us many years into the future. One time, Jesus not only dies, he resurrects, he ascends to heaven, but he takes us to the future. Fast forward to the future. There is hope in Revelation chapter 7 that one day from every nation, from every tribe, one day we will be worshiping the, line, the Lamb of, of God. 
You know, but that day he will be ruling the whole world. There is hope in Jesus. The first time he came as a savior to die, the next time he will come as a king to conquer. You know, we may refer to it as the king of kings and the lord of lords, but he is like that. He is my king. We don't have a little God. We have a big God. Amen? We do. Galatians 4, 4 to 7 says this. But when the time arrived that was set by God, the Father, God sent his son, born among us of a woman, born under the conditions of the law, so that he might redeem those of us who have been kidnapped, I love this, by the law. Thus we have been set free to experience our rightful heritage. You can tell for sure that you are now fully adopted as his own children because God sent the spirit of his son into our lives crying out, Papa, Father. Doesn't that privilege of intimate conversation with God make it plain that you are not a slave but a child? And if you are a child, you are not, you are also an heir with complete access to the inheritance. I love the term Abba Father. You know, the other day, I think it was two days ago, uh, we were looking into Facebook in the morning. And, and you know how Facebook is? It reminds you. It brings you memories. I don't know how many years ago I was flying back to McAllen from one of those conferences. And then my son, David, he is waiting at the airport. And mommy's saying, look, your daddy's coming. And my son is like, I think he's probably five or six. He's looking at daddy like this. Uh, don't you see it? She's like, no, I don't see it. All the people is coming. Then he sees me, and he runs towards me. And he says, Dada! And everybody's looking around like, what's, what's wrong with this kiddo? He's just happy to see that. Daddy, Abba, Father. Today, in this Advent season, what the Bible is telling us, we can come running to Jesus. Because through Jesus, we can come to our Father, and we can say, Daddy, you are here with me in spite of all the situations that are going on in life, in spite of all the difficulties that 2020 has brought, in spite of all the things that you are going on, uh, you know, right now in your life. God is our dada. He's our father. You know, and we are child. We are, we are his children. We have complete access to the inheritance. I have been fully adopted. I am his child. He is my daddy. I am not a slave or sin anymore. I have full access into his presence. I have part of his inheritance. I have hope. I have a future through him, through Jesus Christ. This takes me to the 13th. I'm warming up here. This hope was given to us as a promise. As a promise, as a gift, as a king, as a promise. And we see the characteristics in the names given to Jesus Christ. The first one that he refers to, he says, he's wonderful. And this word signifies, explains that he's supernatural. You know, he is extraordinary. That's our God. This name points us out to the truth that there is nothing common about Jesus. He is the miracle man. He came, he walked, he performed miracles, he was criticized, he carried the sins of the whole world on his shoulders. But he's going far beyond that. And he's going far beyond our level of comprehension. We have a wonderful God. He's also a counselor. You know, the word means to advise, to provide counsel, to provide or to give purpose, to give a plan, to devise. That's what it means. It refers to his role as the leader and guiding force of our lives. And my question to you today is, is Jesus the leader of your heart, of your home? Is Jesus your counselor? You know, he's qualified for the job. The Bible tells us that he had the age and the experience. <laughs> Daniel chapter 7. He has all the knowledge at chapter 1. 1 John chapter 3, 2. You know, he has the education. <laughs> the prophets tells us about that. His price is right. Jesus died on the cross 
for our sins, for all of our mistakes, for my past, my present, and my future sins. Jesus paid the price, the penalty for me. He's always available. What about if you, if you set an appointment with a psychologist, it's great, with a counselor, it's great. But what about setting up an appointment with Jesus today? He's available 24-7. What about you call on the name of Jesus today and you say, Jesus, I desperately need an advice today. As we enter this Advent season, we can come to Jesus and he is our best counselor. He is available. You don't have to wait two months to get to see him. You see him today. He always gives perfect advice. That's the good thing about this counselor. When you find Jesus and then you talk to him, he always provides the right advice, the perfect advice. We can use the word perfect advice. You know, his motives are always pure. First Peter chapter 5, verse 7. He's also a mighty God. This word means hero. Jesus is my superhero. About five years ago, I think I was the... Uh, Five years, six years ago, I was the, the children's pastor for Camp Tejas, and I had a blast during that week. You know, I was the camp pastor, and, and there was this song going on, Jesus is my superhero. You know, Jesus is my superhero. We have any kids in the room, yeah? Yeah, and then you would say, better than Batman, better than Superman. And I stay there because, you know, that reveals my age. I grew up with Batman and, you know, Superman. But Jesus is our superhero. The Bible tells us here that he is strong, mighty, and invincible. That's what this word means. And let me tell you why. Because he has defeated all of our enemies. He has defeated death. No superhero. I mean, it could be Avengers or whatever you like. But Jesus defeated death. He resurrected. The Bible says that he is the first fruit from the death. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15. You know, he conquered sin. He was tested in every single sin, but yet he did not sin. So he defeated sin. Therefore, he's going to help me to pull it through. When I am doubtful, when I am tempted, Jesus is my superhero. He is wonderful. He is my super mighty God. I don't have a little Jesus. I don't have a little God. I have a God that sits on his throne and he's ruling the earth. And he's ruling my life. In spite of what's going on, he is in charge. He's the boss. You know, he defeated the grave. The grave, the tomb is empty. Jesus resurrected. And because Jesus resurrected, we have hope and we have a future through him. He is eternal. John chapter 10 verse 28 tells us about that. The eternity of Jesus. And it takes us to everlasting father. He is the everlasting father. There has never been a time when Jesus was not. And there will never be a time when he will not be. <laughs> Jesus is eternal. But Jesus decides to come into the, from the Kairos to the Kronos, to our time. From the eternal time, he erupts into our Kronos time so that we could have a future. Jesus comes and, and he comes. You know, many generations were whispering the promise of the Messiah. There were about 400 years of silence. And then finally the Messiah came. And when he came... There were very few who actually recognized him and we crucified him and he came and he gave his life. He is the everlasting father. He is the father. Do you remember the time when Moses went to the mount and, and the Lord appeared to Moses? And then the Lord told Moses, well, okay, Moses, you are to go to deliver my people from the hands of Pharaoh. And then Moses said, what shall I say, Lord? And he says, the I am, send me. The I am? Yeah, yeah. The I am, send me. That's what you have to tell him. Okay, okay. Well, let me get it. Let me get it right. The I am. Yes, the I am, send me. That's what you have to say. You see, we see that prophetic word in the Old Testament. The I am, the great I am. 
the great I am, the great I am. Jesus is the great I am. Because of Jesus, we have that everlasting life. He is our father because he's loving us. And Jesus always loves us with an unconditional, never giving up type of love. He never runs low on love. <laughs> Jesus loves me. No matter what happens in my life, he loves me just as I am. Jesus loves you. And I know that sounds cliche and we are starting this Advent season, but Jesus really loves us. He's supporting us. Psalm 18 tells us that he's our support. He has supported us during this pandemic, you know, this 2020. And you would think, oh, I, I, just, I just want 2020 to end. And who would know what 2021 would be? <laughs> we don't know. We don't know. We have to place our trust in Jesus. I am hoping, please, Jesus, you know, give us a sense of relief. But if it doesn't happen, our trust is deposited in Jesus. Because Jesus is the author and perfecter of our faith. He is our strength. He is strong. He is the mighty fortress. We believe in a strong God. Oof, I'm getting excited. And it's time to end. He is the prince of peace. You know, this one is great. He provides peace with God because he paid the penalty for our sins. He provides peace with ourselves so that we can have peace. There is people looking for peace everywhere, but they don't find it because they need Jesus. You can try everything. You can try education. You can try a job. You can try a relationship. You can, you can look back to your failing attempts to try to find peace. And you need Jesus, and perhaps you are tuning in for the first time. And today I tell you, Jesus is hopeful. There is hope in Jesus. Jesus can restore your life. He can lift you up. He can give you purpose and a meaning. He can reconcile your life to God the Father. He can bring peace to other people. All the Old Testament prophecies pointing to the coming of Christ offer a picture of what was to come. He is coming. We can trust in his promises. He told us that he's coming back for his church. I grew up in church and I've been singing that he's coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back. He will come back. But while he comes back, we are the light and the salt of this earth. The kingdom of God is ruling here through the hearts of the church. So we have a role to play here. You know, the kingdom of heaven is not when we die. That will be boring Christianity. I, I didn't sign up for that. I, I don't like that type of Christianity. Don't sell me that type of Christianity. The kingdom of God is here. Yet there is a future realization. The second coming, the second arrival of Christ. But Christ comes to change everything in my life. He comes to rule my life, to restore my life, to bring me purpose and a meaning. So I have hope for the future. And I wait. And while I wait, even if, even if it's painful, he is working in my life. First Peter 1 Peter 1.20 says... He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but he was made manifest in the last times for the sake of you. You know, we can now trust in the promises of God. We lost so much in 2020. I lost some family members in Colombia due to coronavirus. And I, I just went to do a funeral for one of my best friends last weekend. Maybe Thanksgiving was different because we didn't have one of those family members in the seat that they used to sit. We are grieving, but we grieve with hope, with hope, because God is our hope. You know, in John chapter 4, we are told of a woman who met Jesus at a well one day. Do you remember that? She went away from that well, ran into the city, and, and she invited the men of that place. And she, she basically said, come see a man. All her life, she was looking for hope. And she finally found out hope in Jesus. She found hope in Jesus. And here is why. He is the physician who never loses a life. He is the lawyer who never loses a case. He is the captain who never loses a battle. He is the teacher who perfectly teaches every student. He is the preacher who always preaches the right message. He is the musician who always plays the right note. He is the artist who never misses a stroke. 
He is a savior who completely saves all who come to him. He is the master who always leads in the right direction. He is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. He is the counselor who always gives the right advice. Come to Jesus. Come to home today. Come home. Jesus is here. So we look at those pictures. Jesus knew what was going to happen in 2020. What about if Jesus was having in mind people serving the community? What about if people was having in mind people dropping off articles to go and bless somebody else? People going to the schools, people, people praying for each other, getting on the internet and, and reaching thousands of people that otherwise we, we wouldn't be able to. What about if people thought about those small groups in the yard? You know, all those unconventional ways to, to bless people with those masks. I was in Reynosa about a, a week ago, and I prayed for a ministry. And you know what? They were distributing the masks that you all sent. I didn't even know. They got there. I was like, what? Jesus had his plans. In the book of Lamentations, there is a memory verse for today. The book of Lamentations are laments. Complaints. Lamenting, complaining, grieving, mourning. But in the midst of a lamenting number of songs written in Lamentations, we find this, and this is what it says. When life is heavy and hard to take, go off by yourself, enter the silence. Bow in prayer. Don't ask questions. Wait for hope to appear. So today, November 29th, 2020, we wait. Let's bow our heads and let's all pray. If you are tuning in for the first time, you want to come to Jesus. Perhaps this is the time that you want to come to him. You, you haven't met him. You've been running away from him. And today you hear this message and you want the hope. You want the gift. You want the king. You want the promise. You want the peace. Simply, you have to come to him just as you are. With humble hearts. With humble minds. Just as you are. You come to him. You say, Jesus, I repent of all my sins. Lord, I ask you that you give me the gift of your son, Jesus. Allow me to be part of that family. I receive the gift of salvation. From today forward, I, I, I want to be your child. I, I don't know how to do it, but, but you know how to do it. So, so come to me, Lord. Give me hope and a future. Write my name in the book of life. Allow me to experience your kingdom ruling in my life. I pray all these things in the name of Jesus. If you did this for the first time, please let us know. Drop a comment. We want to follow up with you. But for all of us who are here in the room, we come to Jesus just as we are. All of those who are tuning in online and just need hope today, just come to Jesus. The, mo the moment that that woman came to Jesus at the well, Every encounter that Jesus had after he grew up from being a baby, he transformed lives and he wants to transform us today. So we come to him. Lord, we come to you. You are our Dada. You are our Father, our Ava Father. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for that gift of salvation. We thank you because he came to, to give us hope and, and meaning and to cleanse us from all of our mistakes. Lord, we carry so much. And perhaps 2020 has been very difficult. We feel distant from each other, from, even from you sometimes. But we come just as we are. Because through Jesus, he is the prince of peace. He's wonderful. He's a mighty God. He's our counselor. He's our lawyer. We come through Jesus to your presence. And we thank you, Lord, 
for your presence in our lives. We pray that you minister to our hearts, to our minds, to our lives, that you transform us, that you bring a different connotation as we start this Advent season, different meaning, perhaps the meaning, Jesus Christ, changing, ministering, providing peace, hope in every situation. Heal those who need healing today, Lord, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And allow us to see you at work, even in the midst of our pain. We pray all these things in the precious and mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.